Good morning, grade 9. Welcome to my class. I have already taken two, three classes to you. Uh, perhaps they turn to be fruitful somehow. I tried my best. And uh, in today's class, I'm going to discuss you uh, a grammatical topic that is given in your grammar book. The topic Today's topic is uh, sentence. Okay, uh, let's go uh, into to the lesson. In the beginning, let's talk about the definition of sentence. Okay, uh, what a sentence is. Uh, I have, for your convenience, I have made uh, it in the written form. Uh, look at this. Uh, I think you can read it. I think it is clear to you all, isn't it? So uh, all of you can, can can you see this? Okay, let me read for your convenience. A sentence is a group of words that are put together to mean something. A sentence is basic unit of language which expresses a complete thought. A complete sentence has at least a subject and the main verb. Uh, to state, declare a complete thought. This is what the definition of sentence. And what the definition says, uh, there are uh, mainly two, three points. Okay. There are mainly three, three points. Number one, a sentence is group of words. Right. A sentence is group of words. The words are grouped together. And does that mean all group of words uh, make a sentence? No. Further, it says a sentence is a group of words where the words are put together and that means something. It means it should give meaning to. If you put the words together, if you group the words together, that does not mean a sentence. All group of words that does not make a sentence, okay? But what a sentence is? It means you have to group the words, put the words together, and the words are put together in order to give some meaning. It means the group of words should give some meaning. More than that, uh, it says the second point, that is, uh, it is a linguistic unit. Yeah, the sentence is the basic unit of language. It means while communicating, while using language, we use sentences, right? And the third point is that it talks about the parts of sentence, okay? It talks about the parts of sentence. Uh, a complete sentence has at least a subject and main verb, right? Now, at least a sentence can be broken into two parts, okay? At least a sentence can be broken into two parts. One is subject and uh, the other part is called uh, the verb or predicate. About predicate, uh, we uh, discuss further in, in this lesson. Uh, okay, now let's go forward. Okay, children, uh, everyone, uh, please uh, look at the slides. The first, first row, first row, what can you see there? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, S, I, J, up to Z. Yeah. And what are these? These are the letters. English alphabet. Okay. And the second row, in the second row, you can see the Letters, the letters are in, put in the first row, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, is it clear? And the words, in the second row, you can see the words. How are the words formed? How did we form the words? We formed these words using the letters. Letters are grouped into 
words they are put together to give meaning they are also the meaningful unit words are also the meaningful unit first letters are grouped into words second row you can read there go cow beautiful a eat to badly uh. these are the words and how are the words found letters letters are grouped into the higher level higher level units that is words right letters are grouped into the higher level units that are words and now look at the third row a book in the park beautiful house what did we do there what did we do there we did that the words the words are grouped into the another level of language that is phrase okay first letters letters are grouped into words and furthermore again the words are grouped into phrase level okay this is the phrase level a book in the park a beautiful house these are the phrases okay and now finally look at the last row now finally look at the last row you can see it neha goes to market neha goes to market and now we are talking about this label this label of the words okay neha goes to market this is a sentence because if you say a b c d e that are just the letters if you say go cow although these are have some meanings if you say go if you say cow if you say beautiful all eat too like this if you say some words they are also the meaningful units but that are not complete in themselves right and in the next level we come to the phrase level right and in the phrase level words are grouped in the first first uh, phrase a book there are two words and in the uh, next uh, uh, phrase in the park there are three words they are grouped and in the third beautiful house there are two words again words are grouped into higher level and finally words are grouped into the more higher level that is sentence you see neha goes to market it means it gives meaning it is complete in, in, in itself isn't that what does neha do you can have clear answer that is she goes to market so today's topic we are talking about sentence and in this sentence uh, remember that neha is the subject neha is the subject the doer the actor who does the work and goes to market all these part except neha neha goes to market is a complete sentence in this sentence neha is subject goes is verb and so along with goes goes and the rest part of the sentence neha is subject i said neha is subject and goes to market all this is called the predicate verb and the rest of the uh, body part of the sentence that is called predicate is it clear i think Uh, i think you are very much clear up to here let me revise revise once letters grouped into words words grouped into phrase phrases grouped into sentence so sentence is the basic linguistic unit it gives complete meaning so uh, see neha goes to market it has a complete meaning okay now let's go forward 
Look at this. Now, uh, the types of sentences we are going to uh, see. Uh, dear students, what do I like to say? Especially, sentences are classified in two ways. Number one, on the basic of, basis of structure, what is structures they follow. And the next is on the basis of meaning. Okay. And here uh, in this slide, you are given the example and along with the definition. Okay. Uh, and meaning about the sentences on the basis of structure. Remind it. Sentences are classified on the two ways. Okay. First one is first one is on the basis of structure. And the second one is on the basis of meaning. What meaning do they give? Okay. And this slide, this slide talks about the classification of sentences on the basis of structure. Okay. And see there, the first bullet, simple sentence, number one, simple sentence, second bullet, compound sentence, and the third bullet, complex sentence. Okay. First, simple sentence, you can read it too. Second bullet says about compound sentence and third bullet says about complex sentence. Okay. So their definition is also given there. A sentence, a simple sentence contains only one independent class. If you remember the previous slide, okay, Neha goes to market. It was the sentence, isn't that? And in that sentence, there is only one subject and only one verb. Okay, that is a simple sentence. A simple sentence con contains at least at least a subject and a verb. One subject, one verb. Okay, and the next says about uh, the compound sentence. Okay, and the compound sentence. How is it defined? A compound sentence contains at least two independent class. Neha goes to a school. There is one subject, one verb. Neha goes to a school and remember and and is the conjunction that joins two things, right? And she comes back home late in the evening. Now here, we have joined two sentences using and. So in this sentence, in this sentence, remember what did I say? Neha goes to market and she comes home late in the evening. There are two, two simple sentences that are joined by and conjunction okay so that is an example of compound sentence and similarly come to the next point that is complex sentence a complex sentence uh, a complex sentence contains a subordinate class and an independent class remember that in simple sentence that is made up of single class in compound sentence there are two independent clauses and in complex sentence one there is one main class and the other is the other is dependent class it means that without the first without the main class dependent class only cannot give the complete meaning the meaning cannot be clear okay that we go uh, in the next and next slides uh, you will be more clear about it and see there examples are also given there simple compound and complex sentences are all ways of varying the length let's see how they work it is given there 
let me uh, make it clear about it more. Uh, what is the example given there? Christina drank her morning coffee. Christina drank her morning coffee. Look at this sentence. Christina drank her morning coffee. In this sentence, Christina is subject, drank is verb, and subject and verb. Drank her morning coffee, that is predicate. Okay. And the example of compound sentence, what is given there? Look at there. Compound sentence. Uh, marry two independent class. It means two independent class. If you say only one part, that is meaningful. That is complete in, in itself. Right? And if you... Uh, uh, what do I mean? Uh, if you say any one part of the sentence, the meaning is, is complete in itself. Right. So if you say, look at Christina drank her morning coffee, there is comma, and uh, then she showered and dressed. There are two class. One is Christina drank her morning coffee. This is this is a clause. Okay. This one. Christina drank her morning coffee and then she showered and dressed. This is a complete sentence. In this sentence, there are two clauses. What are the two clauses? That are Christina drank her morning coffee is the first clause and and is the conjunction that joins the two clauses and then she showered and dressed that is the another class and now let's try christina drank her morning coffee it is independent in itself and in place of they if in place of c in the second class c is the pronoun that represents christina isn't that and if you replace c in place of c if you write christina christina saw and dressed it is completely in itself therefore these both are independent classes and that are joined by and there so it is an example of compound sentence now finally come to the last example christina missed her morning train because she woke up late when her alarm uh, malfunctioned okay in this sentence there are two parts again in this sentence too there are two parts what are the two parts christina missed her morning train this is first part and because she woke up late when her alarm misfunctioned this is the second part and now these two parts <coughs> these two parts two clause okay are joined by these two clause are joined by because right so if you say if you say because she woke up late her if you say this part the second part of the sentence only then the meaning is not clear it means this part of sentence uh, is has to depend upon the first part right why she missed the train because that is the reason so remember bought and or if the sentences are joined by these sorts of uh, conjunctions then they are almost uh, uh, the compound sentences and if you join the sentences like reason connectives purpose connectives unexpected result connectives like uh, because in spite of although though even though then the sentences become a uh, complex sentence okay uh, let's stop it here and move to the next one now uh, i already uh, told you the first classification of sentence that was on the basis of on the basis of structures right on the basis of structures and uh, now we are going to talk about the kinds of sentences 
that this classification of sentence is on the basis of meaning. Okay? This classification of sentence is on the basis of meaning. On the basis of structures, there are three types of sentences. Now, on the basis of meaning, these are the types of sentences, kinds of sentences. See, simple or declarative sentence, command or imperative sentence, question or interrogative sentence, exclamatory sentence, and optative sentence. Okay. Generally, in our day-to-day -day life, we say declarative sentence, imperative sentence, interrogative sentence, exclamatory and optative sentence okay so uh, we will talk about all these types of sentences kinds of sentences one by one okay uh, so let's move forward let's start with declarative sentence uh, dear students the definition of declarative sentence is that a declarative sentence is a sentence that makes a statement. A declarative sentence is a sentence that makes a statement that says something is or something is not. Right? In other words, in other words, this kind of sentence is used to share information. You say something is or you say something is not. I am a teacher that declares what I am. You say, I am a student that declares what you are. And when you say, I am not a doctor, that states, that declares that you are not a doctor. Right? Declarative sentence says something is or something is not. Right? And see, uh, think about uh, the day-to-day -day communication. We mostly use two types of sentences. Declarative sentence and interrogative sentence. Why we use these two types of sentences? One thing, we want to say something. And another thing, we want to know something. Right? Therefore, declarative sentences and interrogative sentences are very frequently used. Uh, in our day-to-day -day life too. Uh, so see, now what are the parts of declarative sentence? Okay, uh, let's move with the parts of declarative sentence. Uh, I think you also can read there. I have written over there. Let me read it first for you. The parts of declarative sentence are same as those of the many sentence. It must have a subject and a predicate. I already talked about it. Okay. Mostly a declarative sentence has two parts. The subject, the doer and the predicate. Bob and the rest part of the sentence. And what is the subject? It is given there. A subject is what a sentence is about. That is the theme. That is the topic of the sentence. Okay. The subject is the topic of the sentence. And uh, it is a noun or pronoun. A subject. It can either be a noun or a pronoun. For example, Ram goes to school. Ram goes to school. You can write it on uh, in your copy. Write down. And in the sentence, Ram goes to school, Ram is subject. And goes to school is predicate. And what the sentence talks about? Goes to school talks about Ram. Isn't that? Therefore, Ram is the, sub Ram is the subject. If you say, mathematics is a difficult subject, what are you talking about? Mathematics, isn't it? So, mathematics is the subject of the sentence, right? And the predicate, the predicate, uh, a predicate includes the verb plus any other information in the clause or sentence. The verb and the rest part of the sentence is called predicate. 
In the example that you have just written, Ram goes to school. Ram is subject and goes to school. Goes is verb to school. That is, goes to school. That all is predicate. Right? Subject and predicate are the two main parts of articulating sentence. Okay? And see, and uh, examples are also given there. Uh, let me describe you the given example. Uh, all the things that are written in red color that are the subjects and blue color that are the predicate part of the sentence. Look at the first sentence. The dog is sleeping on the coach. In this sentence, the dog is subject and is sleeping on the coach is predicate okay and studying makes uh, taking a test easier here studying that is in red color that is subject makes taking a test easier is predicate okay and Amphibians spend parts of their lives in the water and part of on the land. In this sentence, amphibians, that is the subject. And similar to that, Pokhara is a beautiful city. Pokhara is subject and is a beautiful city, that is predicate. Remember that subject is the topic of the sentence. What you want to talk about, that is the subject. Suppose, if you want to talk about your pain, your pain is the subject. My pain is expensive. If you say, what you are talking about, your pain. So that is the topic of the sentence and that is the subject. Okay. So now, uh, identifying uh, the declarative sentence. Remember that our declarative sentence begins with capital letter. The subject comes first, okay, and then it ends with a period. It is written in the bold form there. It ends with a period. Period means we call full stop. Begins with capital letter and ends in a, with a period. Ends with a full stop right so okay uh, dear students uh, our time for today is over here uh, so what did we do let's sum up uh, in today's class uh, we talk about what language what sentence is isn't that and uh, what what are the classifications of sentences that are on the basis of structure and on the basis of uh, meaning and in today's class we could just meet uh, and discuss about the declarative sentences and uh, today's class time is over here and in the next class uh, I will continue from here uh, the interrogative sentence, imperative sentence uh, and uh, furthermore uh, the rest types of sentences. Uh, thank you for today everyone.